Is AI a friend or foe to the accounting profession? This is the Issues Watch podcast. Hi, I'm Don Meyer, Chief Marketing Officer at the New Jersey Society of CPAs, and welcome to the Issues Watch podcast. With the use of artificial intelligence, or AI, on the rise, many companies don't know how it will impact their business. Some are using OpenAI's ChatGPT to write code, generate marketing materials, and create lesson plans to save time and boost productivity. But some big companies are restricting their employees from using the AI chatbot. Despite these different approaches, leaders from every industry acknowledge that their companies will be affected by AI, forcing them to ask difficult questions. Here with me to provide some answers to those questions is Leon Grassi, Chief Marketing Officer and Head of Business Development at Parsippany-based Saks LLP. Leon has nearly 20 years of experience in the marketing and business development profession, having worked in the media, publishing, consumer electronics, IT, and accounting sectors. Welcome, Leon. Thanks, Don. Right. I appreciate it. I'm and a little freaked out. I thought I was here to talk about tax code, and this is now you hit me with well, the we AI can, thing. I mean, we can do that, too. <laughs> totally I mean, kidding. we have all the time in the world. Totally kidding. I mean, we appreciate you coming in. This Thank is one you. of, we're, we're going to throw off our viewing audience because they're used to seeing me just talking to a screen yeah, and somebody on the other end. So. Let's make some content. Yeah, so I feel like, you know, we've been doing this podcast for a few years. Um, we've not had you on, which is a mistake on my part, but I, I feel like your entire career has led to this moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no pressure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty accurate. I think it's uh, it, it's been a, a long journey to this point, Tom. It has, but we've known, we've known each other a long time. <laughs> we have, yeah. yes. All sir. right, All right so let's, let's jump in. So I mentioned in the opening that some companies are hiring employees with chat GPT expertise, mm. but others, some big companies, uh, I looked up earlier, Amazon, yeah. JPMorgan Chase, um, Apple, like companies you would think would be jumping into AI, they're actually putting the brakes on integrating AI into their employees' workflows. So why do you think that is? You know, um, I think if I look at big organizations that are very heavily driven by public perception, uh, compliance, security, safety, uh, general, um, you know, they have more PR concerns, right? right. And I think right. that because of all of the unknowns, I mean, let's be honest, I, I'm by no means, I'm, I'm not an AI expert. I should probably establish that right off the bat. <laughs> Who is? Uh, right, I mean, no, I don't, there aren't many. And, you know, the reality for me is I, I happen to be very passionate about uh, automation, artificial intelligence, just technology in general. Um, and a little bit, you know, jokingly to your point, I have spent a career essentially building that, that passion and that knowledge base. So, so having said that, I want to establish I am not an expert. My opinion, I, I think, is, is because we are so early on in the evolution and the process of artificial intelligence, automation, et cetera, I think companies like that just by design have to be a little bit more you know, Quantum. reticent. Yeah, yeah, they have to pump the brakes because the the reality right now is there is very little, if any, oversight at all. Um, you know, that oversight right now that exists is basically self-governed by the people who created AI in the first place. So there 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 isn't a a governing body. There aren't rules and regulations in place yet, and I think that's probably one of the primary areas of concern for a lot of those large organizations. Now, having said that. To say that their employees and you know and, and people associated with them aren't towing those waters in AI at already is probably a foolish thing. I mean, I guarantee right. they are. Right. Um, having said that, I, I think they you know they're covering themselves, and, and it really at, at the large company level, it's not about a lack of education. I think they're exactly. I think they have a lot of education around the subject matter because right. they have experts that they can say, hey, you know, go, they've, they've already sent their IT teams and their risk management teams to the field and said, do the homework, right? right? So, right. you know, we really should be taking their lead. Conversely, a lot of smaller organizations that don't have that level of complexity in risk management and, uh, and IT operations, et cetera, you know, are more willing to experiment. Right. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. We don't know yet. Well, the profession that we both work in has a lot in common. You mentioned, you know, uh, Apple and other companies being yep. cautious and wanting to be careful and so forth. I mean, that's that's right up accounting's alley. <laughs> because, I mean, it was built on a foundation of being cautious and very careful true. and so forth. So, it's very true. Um, and I should, you know, you say you're not an expert in AI, but what we're going to discuss today is not so much the technical aspects of it. Yeah. I had done a, a podcast with um, one of our board members, Dr. Sean Stein Smith, a while back, where he talked about more of the kind of the technology because it was brand new and kind of explaining it. 
what we want to talk about is really like how do you use it? Right. Like how can accounting firms, how can uh, companies and individuals use it? So um, what are the expectations and the risks associated with AI from a, from a user standpoint, from a company standpoint? The risks are many. I, 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 I think before I even go down that path, let me, let me caveat and take a brief step back, which is we are, ChatGPT is the overbearing popular right tool right now in the marketplace. And that's what's really spurned this whole idea and notion of artificial intelligence. While in reality, ChatGPT really isn't AI. Right, so, and you know, strike me down for saying, that, like, it, it's, it's natural language processing. So as a tool, it is basically, it, it's, it, it, it functions based on a defined set of rules, right, that it has been given. So is there an intelligence layer to ChatGPT? Yes, is it artificially intelligent yet? The answer really is no, right, if I'm being super techie. Right. Um, having said that, it, it is opening up, right, ChatGPT has, is opening up the idea, the concept of artificial intelligence and what that will um, become, right, as the world continues. And, and you can't put that cat back in the bag, right? right. So it's out now. So, um, so that's my caveat, right, to, to, to the, the following statement. I think that what we're seeing is... Um, there are great risks associated with leveraging uh, an unchecked tool in the marketplace. Anything new, there's going to be some concern around mm -hmm. um, what people are going to use it for. I, I, you know, I've said to my staff repeatedly that I, I don't, it's probably unfair for me to expect you not to explore this solution because it really can be a very valuable tool, and we'll get into that through conversation. It can be a very valuable tool for all of us in the industry. But I think we have to be a little bit cautious about how um, how free we're allowing people to be with the data and the information that they are gathering through the tool. Um, you know, I, I, I it is a it is a when I say it, I'm still referring largely to ChatGPT because it is the the like I said before the predominant tool that's being leveraged under the guise of artificial intelligence. I think that it's really important that leaders of organizations such as ours in the professional services space, which has always been very resistant to change, oh, yeah. right? You kind of referenced that. Um, I think it's important that we do our homework, we do our diligence, and more than anything else, we make sure that our team is leveraging the tools under some guidelines that we impose. So, you know, my call to action, Don, and if anybody takes anything from this podcast today, I think really it's to put some sort of a uh, general use policy in place as part of your uh, employee handbook corporate structure around the use of artificial intelligence. Right. Right? And it can be fairly generic. Um, it can be, listen, you know, we're not saying don't use the tool. What we're saying is don't uh, enter any client data mm. into said tool, right? right. Don't um, uh, just flat out send your res the response that you get to the question for that you're asking the tool don't just send it directly to a client or a, an important resource or center of influence within your organization without first running it up the flagpole to right. make sure that the management team reviews it and says yes like we need to wordsmith here and there we need to change you know common sense type things there are a lot of there's been precedent in the marketplace with with um, these type of general use policies they're available online you can actually ask ChatGPT to write you <laughs> a general use policy for using ChatGPT, right. which is hilarious, but it will give you in less than eight seconds a very, very good start mm -hmm. at a general use policy that you can then share with your team. I, I strongly encourage that because, again, there are risks associated with the tool, and that's a really low-hanging fruit way of right uh, of sort of right. satisfying <laughs> or at least curbing some of those concerns associated with the risk. At least that's what I think in the short term. Yeah, and I think what you said uh, about a minute ago about it provides a good start. 100%. Because I think one thing we should, we should definitely emphasize to everybody who's either using ChatGPT or a similar tool or is thinking about using it is it makes mistakes. It's been wrong. And I, I found it interesting the last couple of days um, I went to post something on LinkedIn and an AI tool comes up and says, oh, do you want AI basically to start this post for you? We're at, we're at the precipice of a major proliferation of artificial intelligence in the general landscape of our day-to-day -day professional activity. By the way, don't try to say that three times fast. I don't even know how I just got that out. 
Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I think that this is, this is where things start to take a turn. And I think, you know, you saw the value, and I think a lot of people will start to see the value that, that this, this AI uh, will bring to us as we engage in a professional capacity. And, and you know, my, <laughs> again, let's take this back to the professional services landscape, specifically accounting, you know, the legal profession, very, a lot of similarities there. I think that there's going to be two types of employees as, as we move forward. There's going to be the ones that have genuinely embraced artificial intelligence, which will enable them to be, let's just call it what it is, much more efficient and effective, mm -hmm. right, as a professional. And then there are those who will be resistant to it. And if I'm being honest, I think their lunch is going to be eaten, mm, yeah. so to speak, right? Yeah. I, I think that this is a, it's a tool like anything else. It is a tool. And, and in an industry that is so dominated by competition, by, um, by consolidation, right? I, I, there is a, I see, which is funny because my friends know me as a, as a pessimist and as a cynic, but I see very optimistically, I see a huge opportunity for professionals in our industry, especially those that are on the younger side, so the young up and coming professionals. I see a huge opportunity for, for them to leverage technologies such as ChatGPT to ultimately advance themselves through their career, maybe faster, maybe more effectively. And, and really, it's, it's sort of an evolution, right, that our industry has been so um, hungry for for such a long time. It's an right. evolution to a much more well-rounded, consultative, and advisory-based professional, as opposed to the one that just... I hate to say the cliche, but puts numbers in boxes. Right, right. I, I think that's this is a tool that's going to enable that to happen. Right, and I guess there's there's two sides of that coin. I think it will open up a lot of possibilities for accounting and finance professionals and eliminate some of that grunt yep. work. But the other side of that coin is there are students and prospective accountants and CPAs mm -hmm. out there who are looking at going, oh well, AI is going to kill accounting. No. So I think you know the the phrase that I've heard a number of times, yeah. different variations of it is that AI is not going to eliminate CPAs, it's going to eliminate CPAs who don't use AI. Bingo. Yeah. Um, so, let's, let's, so let's talk about, because I, I find it funny, like, you know, I was in my 20s when the internet became a thing. I think it's still funny, like, young people can't understand, like, a world without internet. Yeah. But, I, you know, when the internet became a thing, I was in my 20s, I was at work, and almost immediately people went to the uh, opportunity to plagiarize others' work. <laughs> and it's just funny to me, artificial intelligence, we're on one hand we're talking about like robots and robots taking over the world and, and uh, the singularity and all this other stuff. <laughs> but ultimately it's like I've, my son started his junior year at college and every single one of his professors said yeah. don't use ChatGPT because yeah. I'll know it and you'll get yeah. enough on the assignment. So well, I don't know why all these amazing technologies come down to plagiarism. But there's got to be some, as you mentioned, some positives to it. So from a, a firm company perspective, how can AI positively impact yeah. revenue? Because that's what it calls, comes down well, to. Any new tool, they want to make sure that they're going to make some money off of it. The, the least common denominator, by the way, is plagiarism, right? right. Because, right. because think about it, right? Any, any tool, you're, you're ultimately looking for tools by definition provide you with an advantage, mechanical right. or otherwise. And when you're looking for an advantage and you're a student, the first thing you're going to find an advantage in is right. doing your homework, right? right. So, um, and I think demographically, we're probably pretty similar in, in a, we, yeah. I joke that we, I used to, I know what the internet sounds like, right? <laughs> remember those days? Like, um, so yes, I, you know, we, we saw that evolution and, and the change and the ma and, and gosh, remember how many detractors there were, right? Oh, when, yeah. when the internet first had their explosion, the dot-com bubble of the early 2000s. Some people right? say, oh, it's basically nothing but an online library. Right, exactly. Yeah, and then that. fast forward, right, 30 years from there and, you know, we, couldn't function as a society, right, without right. access to that information. So there's always going to be early detractors, and, and this is, having spent half of my 20-year career in the technology industry, I can tell you that it, it can't be stopped, Don. Right. Right. I, I know that right. so, it sounds awful, but, like, it, it, you know, the, the reality is, is Moore's law applies, and technology exponentially increases in capability and in processing speed and power, and we will just continue to find new ways to leverage those tools, right. you know, and... and um, <laughs> when Skynet became aware in 1997, August 29th, actually, right. of 1997, uh, <laughs> you know, then the computers went after man. Will that happen in the future? Is Matrix going to be? I, I love all of these jokes right. because I don't know. Who knows? Right. Maybe someday we'll be facing that sort of a risk. I don't know. But, but you know, 
I, d I don't think that's a concern right now. I think that in our, I think you said it best just before, which is there, there are those who will learn how to leverage that technology, who will embrace it early, the early adopters, and their, their abilities as a professional will improve exponentially versus those that don't. I don't think that there's an end to the accounting profession, CPAs in general, right. as a result of artificial intelligence. Now, having said that, my, I, I do believe that there are probably many job functions that will be at a greater risk, and the, the data proves this. this isn't just me saying that there's research, Google it, right? Remember right. Pre-Googled it. Right. Google it, and you will see that there are articles galore on you know which professions, which job functions will likely be replaced first by artificially intelligent computer systems. Um, and that's probably true for a lot of different places. And, and having said that, I think we're just going to have to learn how to pivot and adapt and work around that. But I don't think in a profession driven so heavily by consulting, by, um, by understanding the big picture and being able to come up with a solution on behalf of organizations and clients based on that big picture. I think there's too many variables for, for AI to replace that. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, uh, there are a lot of components of it where that consultant will be asking artificial intelligence for guidance when it comes to engaging and coaching and directing. But ultimately, because we as humans and our financial pictures and our business structures and pictures are so complex, I think that, and there are so many variables that change so often, I think that the tool is just going to help them be better. You said it best before. You know, the, the, the best accountants are going to be the ones, and I don't want to lump them. Accountants is no longer a term we like to use at our firm, by the right. way. Um, I don't want to lump everybody into the same category, but the best advisors and consultants, business advisors and consultants, which is really what we're becoming, are the ones that know how to use the tool and use it to their advantage. And, and that, to me, is the win. Look at the challenges in our marketplace right now. Right. Right? We are being forced to do a lot more with a lot less. Right. And it's harder and harder to find resources. And so I think that this the outcome of this is going to be very positive in two ways. One, we will be able to do more with less because the technology will in some cases make it, make our existing staff and team much more effective and efficient at what they do. But then the other side of that token is I think that as an industry that embraces technology such as this, we are going to open ourselves up to an influx of new young professionals that maybe wouldn't have paid attention before. Right. Right, is that, you know, we joke, which it's how do you make accounting sexy? Right. Well, this is this is absolutely a start. If, as an industry, we come to embrace the advancements in artificial intelligence, automation, and technology, we we will become a much more appealing target for a whole new generation of tech-focused young professionals. Right. And that is going to flip the script for us. That's going to change the dynamic. So, as we continue to evolve, we'll have, you know, we'll have less and less issues associated with staffing because that evolution is going to require non traditional accounting professionals and you know right let's right. be a more appealing target for them right and and not just sexy and appealing but relevant 100%. you want to be yeah relevant you want to be timely right. and you want people to know you want students to know right. that this job I'm going for is still going to exist in 10 years well, right. it's not only going to exist it's going to be better right because of, of uh, artificial intelligence and other technologies and if I may so we you know chat GPT is basically what we're talking about right, right. now imagine when real AI <laughs> actually right. gets released, right? Like, right. whoa, right? I mean, we're, uh, you know. I mean, ChatGPT could be the, the MySpace of the AI world. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's remember, it's a precursor. Right. A and I, th real artificial intelligence, which is, you know, uh, disconnected, independent, not, right. not necessarily governed by the same natural language processing rules that are in place for ChatGPT, Oof, I can't. I can't even begin to imagine what's going to happen when when we go down that path. And there are some very very large organizations, the Googles and Microsofts, that will be, you know, very well positioned and are going to be some of the first and second to market to bring those type of solutions. But I mean, we're not even really thinking about what that looks like yet. And I think that's going to be a dramatic change. So yeah, call me back when right. we're ready to when when real AI gets released. Well, that, could be in a, that could be in a couple of months. Probably, <laughs> it could know, be. Yeah. It could yeah. be. And then we can really get into it. Right. Because remember, the other thing about ChatGPT right now is the data is still in arrears. Right. It's still right. it's mm -hmm. still not up to date. It's a couple years old at right. this point. Right. And that's by design from the makers of the tool because right. so much change happens on the internet that right. they don't they 
two-year-old data is probably at this point a little bit more right. Uh, level, right, and right. static it, at this point. I mean, point. it's almost still like in a extended beta phase. B essentially, correct. So, so you know, there, so because of that change, there's a lot of concern about how up to date you want the data to be. So, what we tell the team is, hey, you know, use it to prepare for meetings. Use it in scenario-based situations, right? So. Right. You know, say you're sitting with a client and you're not entirely sure how to introduce them to one of the cross-sell services of your firm, ask ChatGPT. If you don't have a business development person on staff like we do, ask ChatGPT, hey, how would you suggest that I handle this? And right. it'll give you a really good yeah, response. Yeah. And like, that's not client data. It's right. not in any way uh, a detriment to, to you know, the, 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 the information you're delivering. It's just a, it's giving you a little bit of coaching and guidance. So there's some really great ways to use the tool that, are a lot less risky for the organization. Right. And, and you know, so I think that's an important way to start. And then on the marketing side, Dom, which is like our world, right. you know, I tell my team all the time, I, I wrote a piece, uh, I wrote a piece last week, right? I wrote a piece on corp the Corporate Transparency Act, right? I put together just a quick 800 words on the corporate, I'm kidding, <laughs> I didn't write it. <laughs> but I asked ChatGPT, right to write me a piece on how to educate my audience on the Corporate Transparency Act. And in s four seconds, it gave me a really nice and concise definition. Now, I, I can't just throw that out and say, okay, we're good, right. publish, right? right. So we, we wordsmithed it as a team. We did a little bit of research on the marketplace because it is old data and the Corporate Transparency Act has changed a lot over the last two years. Right. But it gave us the foundation of a marketing piece that we then sent to the head of our international tax team and had her review, and she corrected, make some notes, adjustment. We went back and forth a few times, and it's been posted. Yeah, I mean, we, we've dabbled in it. Um, I don't think we've actually published anything that was you know, strictly ChatGPT, yep. but I think it's a good foundation. Um, what I have seen for anybody that decides to use mm -hmm. ChatGPT for any type of marketing copy or PR copy or anything like that is, um, well, the, the the writing, the language yeah. is, is fine. It's probably you know B B minus level yeah, writing. That's fair. I think to your point is it lacks a level of specificity. It does. It doesn't personalize it, individualize it, yeah. um, and that's where it's missing. But yeah, it's it's very. It's good for foundation stuff. Exactly. It yeah. gives you a really solid foundation to work from. We asked it to give us. We have a new uh, family office practice. Well, it's not a new practice, but a new practice lead at the firm, and we asked. ChatGPT to help us to work on the elevator pitch for family office to the marketplace. Gave us a really great, uh, concise, five bullet type response where these are the things you should focus on. It, again, it's, 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 it's like asking a friend who has unlimited access to the internet to draft you a piece. They're right. going to do a pretty good job of it. And then you need to massage and tweak and adjust and wordsmith. Right. But it's a really good tool for the foundation, for the start. Yeah. Um, you know, and what I like to do is I like to, f I like to footnote it, by the way. So when I post content that's written and drafted by ChatGPT, I like to footnote that and sure say so. that this, you know, in, in part, this piece in part was created leveraging ChatGPT as And a that tool. can be part of the use guide. Yeah. I, I think it's a, an important thing for the marketplace to understand as well so yeah. that they just, un you know, they don't feel swindled in any way. Right, that's right, right. You don't want people to feel swindled, right, exactly. you know? Like, and I think that may be the biggest struggle that uh, CPAs, accountants, finance professionals have with this technology is that this profession is so process driven. Yeah. And they, there are so many people that are, are uh, employed by right. or in the process. But you know, your firm and others are getting more into the advisory area. And so now through this technology, through a lot of technologies, they can, they can focus more on the results, on the advice, on the implementation, Absolutely. as opposed to the process. But I think that's going to be a hard nut to crack because it it's, it's it's because there's a lot of people in the profession. They don't like to let go. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, we don't have a choice anymore, right. really. I mean, this that's why we're having this conversation today. It's why, you know, uh, Gartner's uh, marketing predictions for 2023. Three of the five predictions for this this year into next year were all based on artificial intelligence and automation. Yeah. I mean, it's. You know, the, the world knows that this is out of the box. Right, exactly. So, all right, well, we'll have to have you back in probably a few months or <laughs> at this six rate. Months a year yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, hey, thanks for coming in. Thanks no, for this is us. great, I man. Really, really I appreciate I, it. This is fun. I Thank appreciate you. it. I love Thank this you. stuff. Thanks for listening and watching. For articles, resources, and events about artificial intelligence and automation, visit njcpa.org slash hub slash AI.